Hey guys, how's it going? <clears throat> Today I've got another cool, like, a, I really, really like this knife. So, spoiler alert, okay? Uh, this was loaned in by my buddy Jason, who sent in some really cool stuff that I'm enjoying getting to know before doing the videos. So this one is, <clears throat> and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this correctly or not, this is the Duraca Steel. I think that's how you say it. Tucon Double XL. And it comes with this, uh, you know, certificate. Has all the specs. Absolutely love a birthday on knives. I think Chris Reeve does that fantastically. Every knife has. Some other makers used to do it, and they no longer do, which I think is a mistake. I, how hard is it to just put a date? So... Duraca Steel does just a month and a year. Um, Chris Reeve does the month, day, and year, which I think is fantastic. Um, some other makers used to do month, day, year, and now they do nothing, which I think is crap. Uh, it comes in a kind of, you know, kind of nondescript, whatever, kind of a plastic case with some padding. Um, not terrible, but nothing to write home about. <clears throat> so let's dive into this Toucan Double X. L. Ooh. Close length is five and an eighth. Eight and a half inches. Just a just a hair over eight and a half inches overall. The blade is 3.55 with a cutting edge of 3.27 of CPM 3V. And this is their first um the very first one they did with a compound grind. And we'll do a little bit more close-up of that, but worth mentioning. Blade thickness is 0 0.209. Now, you know I like big, heavy, overbuilt knives. And this fits right into that category for me. With an overall thickness of 0 0.641 minus the clip. Weighs in at 10.8 ounces, which I know a lot of you are going to be like, no, nope, too heavy, done, and you're going to turn off the video. That's fine. This is not for your, this is not your dad's, you know, Oldsmobile, right? This is not an everyday carry for everybody. But, man, is it cool. So let's zoom in here and talk about a couple things. <clears throat> Excuse me. The finish on the blade, I think, is awesome. I love this, uh, I don't even know what you call it exactly, a heavy stone wash? almost just like a rock pattern. It just, I don't know. I love, it's very raw. It's like a raw metal type of finish to me. And then they did satin on the flats. Now it is a hollow grind in the front and a flat grind in the back. The grind lines at that secondary bevel, you know, I'm, I don't sharpen my own stuff, but that looks a little odd to me and not very even. Okay, now granted, this is the first compound grind that they ever did, but right in here, it's very thin. You know, it kind of goes from kind of, you know, normal-ish size uh, there to very thin to then a very broad secondary bevel. Okay, again, I am not a sharpener guy, so we'll leave that as it is. What is very cool is the... Dama steel pivot collar. I like the little holes, kind of for lightning and aesthetics. And you can see, Jason carries this thing. It's kind of beat up. I mean, not in a bad way. It's got some, some wear marks and some love on it. And that's awesome. They also carry the Dama steel to the clip, which is fantastic. Now, what would have been really kind of over the top for me personally is if they would have carried the Dama steel into the backspacer. Okay? Yeah, you know, I can wish for things, right? Traditional frame lock, another Dama, uh, Dama steel pivot collar, and the same affair on the blade. Now, I love the blade because they just didn't plaster it with a bunch of branding. They have the logo and that's it. And I'm cool with that. You have to put a little bit of branding on your knife. Well, I don't know. Do you have to? 
Do we have to? I don't know. Let's think about that. Leave me your comments on that because I'm curious as to what you think about blade branding or knife branding. I am very minimalist. A logo, you're good. Maybe the blade steel. I mean, the blade steel is nice, and I don't think there is a blade steel marking on this anywhere. Sometimes they hide it kind of down inside of the flipper tab, but I don't see anything here. The flipper tab has some really nice jimping on it. Could be a little more aggressive, but I think it works really well. And you can deploy this two ways. You can put your finger up high and kind of light switch it, meaning pulling it down like a light switch, and it works great. You can also just stick your finger here on kind of the butt end of it and do a push button, which really just is pushing it in. And I'm not pulling down, I'm just literally pushing in. And yes, by nature, my finger goes down. I mean, it, it's a subtle difference, but it works equally well in both. Um, and that's because of the great location of it. <clears throat> now, pocket carry. It's going to carry about like this. Okay, it's not the greatest, I'll be honest. It takes up... it. it this protruding kind of corner here takes up your pocket. It's hard, not hard, it, it's a little awkward and difficult to get your hand in your pocket to get anything else out. Granted, we don't carry a lot in our knife pocket, but it kind of sticks out a little awkwardly. I wonder if, and again, I'm not a knife maker, could this whole clip have been moved up and over and attached kind of just in here? So this, you know, the anchoring point was just up here instead. Would have carried a little deeper and pushed the knife that way into your pocket more so that, you know, maybe it was only this much protruding out. That might have been better. I don't know. <clears throat> Again, I'm not a knife maker. I don't understand the geometry of all of that stuff and, you know, what goes into that. But all in all... The jimping on top is fantastic. You can most certainly choke up on it and drop your thumb into this kind of hollowed out spot on the top of the blade for intricate cutting. It feels great in the hand. There's, there's no hot spots. You could be banging away with this for days and be good. In a reverse grip, which, you know, whatever, you have your own feelings on a reverse grip, feels equally fantastic. The clip, while it may be in the, I'm not going to say the wrong spot, while it is a little bit awkward in the pocket, it slides in and out of the pocket perfectly. There is a little gap between the clip and the scale, which I think is fantastic, especially on a shorter clip like this that may not have a lot of spring. That lets you slide it in one-handed, no problem, and yet there is enough tension to hold it. It's not going to go anywhere, partially because of the 10 ounces of weight holding it in too, but you can definitely carry this all day. It's, it's not a problem, guys. You know, let's, <clears throat> let's do some size comparisons. We'll leave it this way with the clip hanging out because, well, it's just an awesome looking clip. Here it is next to the Sharpie. <clears throat> roughly the same size as the handle. Um, we'll start off kind of on the small side. Spider Go Delica. <clears throat> and while we're at it, how about the Endura? Endura is a little bit longer, but overall much smaller in every other dimension. Much easier to carry in your pocket. The Hellraiser, because, well, it's just awesome. About the same length. Different shape, different style, different everything. But, oh, God, just... I get questions all the time about this one. Is it spring assist? Because a little bit of pressure, break the detent, and it's out. No, it's not spring assist. With a spring assist, you can't... 
just drop it shut like that. This is totally manual, yet fires like a spring assist. The Chris Reeve Large Subbenza 21. And I didn't bring out to really a big overbuild, but the 523, I don't know if I would consider that an overbuild. Maybe. You know, eh, kind of 50-50 on this one. This one I would definitely put in the overbuilt category because it's so thick. This one I would put in the large or, you know, bigger than large size, but I don't know if I would put it in the overbuilt category because it's a very thin blade. I don't know. We'll go back and forth on that one. So there you have it, guys. <clears throat> the Duraca Steel Toucan Double XL. Thank you, Jason, for sending this in. This has just been... A joy to check out. Um, I love it. it. It's it's really great. And yeah, there's a couple of little minor things, but I think if we really nitpick on any knife, we could find things. Now the stop pins are not thumb studs. I almost wish they were, because they kind of look like it. And so if you just pick this up the first time, you may say, "Oh yeah, it doesn't work that way," but. Other than that, I, it's just, I don't know. It's a lovely knife. So thanks, Jason, for sending it in. I do greatly, greatly appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for watching. I appreciate that, too. Have yourselves an absolutely fantastic day. And uh, be sure to come back tomorrow for another video. Thanks, guys.